In this lesson, what we're going to be doing is we're going to go back to looking at probability trees and trying to find a different way of being able to draw them. So I wanted you to consider a problem first up. So we've got a problem here where I've got um, two black balls and one red ball and they're placed in a bag. One ball is drawn at random from the bag and then it's replaced and a second ball is drawn and then I've got some questions that go along with it. So the first thing we'd like, I'd like you to do is to think about drawing the diagram. So if you think about it, you're going to have your first ball that you're going to draw and then you're going to have your second ball that you're going to draw from the bag and then we're going to have some kind of outcomes. So if we think about it, the first ball, I can get a black, or I could get another black ball, or I could get a red ball. So they're the three ones we could get. When I do a second ball, I'm getting exactly the same outcomes from each of my first balls because it doesn't really matter what I got first up because the ball goes straight back in. So my second ball could be black, black, red and black, black, red and black, black, red. And then I would write down all my um, outcomes so I'd have black, black reading across the probability tree and another black, black and then a black, red and so on. And so what we have here are all of the outcomes. And the problem I have with doing this, it's actually quite tedious. Particularly when I've got blacks, can't I maybe somehow rather join these together? So let's have a look at another way of doing this. So another way of doing exactly the same problem is to still have the same sorts of outcomes. So you've got your first ball that you're going to draw and you've got your second ball. But rather than laboriously having to write everything out, I can think about it only being two things that are happening. I can get a black or a red. And what I can do is I can put the probabilities of getting a black. There are two blacks in the bag out of there are three balls in the bag altogether. And so the probability for getting a red is going to be one out of three because there's one red and in the bag there's three balls. So now I can do the same for my second ball. Oops, this would be a red. And I can see that I'm only now considering a black and a red. So already I'm saving some time because I'm only drawing a small diagram. And once again I write my probabilities on the branches. So I've got two-thirds and one-third, and you can see the numbers add together. The two plus the one make the three, so the denominators are the same. And here I've got two out of three and one out of three. And so my outcomes are still the same. I've got black, 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 red, red, black, and red, red. Now if we think about it, the probability now Now let me put outcomes here. To work out the probability, I'm now going to multiply along my branches. So the probability of getting a black and a black is 2 out of 3 times 2 out of 3, which would give me 4 out of 9. And if we go back up and have a look at the previous question, to getting a black, black, there'd be 1, 2, 3, 4, out of nine. So you can see it's just a simpler way of coming up with the correct answer. So for a black and a red, I'd go two out of three and then times by one out of three. So two out of three times one out of three. And then we'd come up with an answer. And the same again for a red and a black. So the red is one out of three times a two out of three. And the red, red, one out of three times one out of three. So now that you've got your sheets in front of you, can you just have a look at the questions? We're looking now to work out the probabilities of everything. So if you look at the first one for part A, the question is asking what is the probability of a red then a black ball? So we're looking for a red then a black. This is this one here. So the probability is 1 out of 3 times by 2 out of 3 which gives me 2 out of 9. So that's the first one. For the second one, it says for the probability of a red ball and a black ball. And it's saying that in this case we're not talking about any particular order. So a red ball 
and a black wall. So remember that word and. So we're looking at the red and the black and the black and the red. So the red and the black, so red and the black, that's one third times two thirds, the same as the question above. And because there's more than one thing happening, we're now going to add them. And black and red, so if I'm looking for black and red, that's this one here. Black and red is two thirds by one third. And if you work this out, I've just about run out of room, you get four out of nine. So let's have a look at part C then. Part C, the probability of two the same colour. So two of them the same colour. So what is that going to look like? Well, we can either get a black black. So a black black you can see is two out of three times two out of three. Or we can get a red red. And red red is one out of three by one out of three. And if we work that out one out, you get five out of nine. So for the very last one, D, it says probability of at least one black ball. Probability at least one black. Now there's a couple of ways of doing it. At least one black, you can see this one has a black, this one has a black, and this one has a black. So it's each of those probabilities added together. Or an easier way I like it is at least one, I always think it's one minus the probability of red red. Because the red red is the one that we don't want. So every other bit of probability must count. So that's one minus one over three times one out of three. And so the answer to this is simply eight out of nine. So that's how easy it is. What I'd like you to do is make sure you understand this and then go on and watch part two of this video.